Hello everyone, my name is Keith Hoover. I'm the founder and CEO of Dashpoint Analytics, and we provide actionable intelligence for the post-acute care market. And today I'd like to spend a little time talking about the five-star rating for skilled nursing facilities. Um, we often get asked by facilities, what are the key metrics to improve my five-star rating? So the purpose of the, today's video is just to sort of take an example facility and walk through how we can improve their five-star rating. So what you see on the screen right now is our uh, demo site. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in and we will show you an example facility uh, who would like to improve their rating. So uh, as you sign in, you're going to see on the left uh, a number of our dashboards. This is just a sampling of a few of them. Uh, but what comes up immediately is our five-star comparative analysis dashboard, and that's what we're going to use today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go full screen so you have a better view of what's going on here. The uh, sample facility we're using, this is a fictitious facility. It's called Woodcat Woodcrest Rehabilitation Center, and currently they are a three-star uh, if you're looking at this screen, basically, this is a tool to compare against other uh, facilities in your county, uh, local peers. The green stars are your facilities ranking, and the blue stars is the aggregate of, uh, of your local peers and competitors. So you can sort of see how you stack up. So this particular facility is an overall three-star. They had a three-star on their health inspection. Their staffing is three and their QMs is four. So what we're going to do today is talk about how we can improve either to a four or even a five for this facility. So I'm going to go ahead and as many of you know, the overall star rating is broken down into three parts. You have the health inspection, staffing, and then quality measures. So uh, it always starts out with the health inspection survey. That is the baseline in which your score begins at and then staffing can either move it up or down as well as quality measures can move it up or down. So this, uh, this second tab here is your health inspection. This particular facility landed right here in the middle of average. Uh, if you can look, basically your score is going to uh, over here on the right, you can see this particular example facility is in Wisconsin, and they finished in the top about third in Wisconsin in their inspection score. Uh, right here, you can see the list of their deficiencies. Now, your survey score is a weighted average of the last three surveys, the most recent being the most uh, significant part of the overall score, and then uh, the, the one before that, has a, a smaller chunk and then the one before that is even smaller yet. So you actually, you might have an amazing score uh, most recently, but it's not gonna be instantaneous that that uh, is your overall score. So right now, uh, if, you're, if you're looking, if you're kind of curious how you're doing, cycle one would be the most recent. As you can see, they did very well. Cycle two, not so well, and cycle three right here. The blue bar right here is your, your current rating as an aggregate over these three. And then down in the bottom right here, we have the top tags by, uh, by in the state, so you can sort of see what surveyors are tagging most facilities in your state for. Right now it's infection control, which is not surprising given COVID-19 recently, um, but anyway. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can go uh, improve the score. So right now, if, if you'll remember, they were a three. Um, so we're gonna go to staffing. Now with staffing, the way it works is if you are a four or a five in overall staffing, you can go up one star provided it exceeds your survey. So if we get a four or five in overall staffing, we can bump ourselves up one star from our survey rating, which was three stars. So right now, uh, you can see they have RN is in, in the three, and their overall is actually in a four. I should say their total is in a four, but their overall is in a three. Now, just a point of uh, to note here, when you have 
a four in one and a three in the other, it's always going to round towards the RN score. So um, if we want to bring our overall up to a four, we need to really just focus on RNs for this facility. So how much? Well, the nice thing about our dashboard right here is you can see your FTEs. It will tell you how many FTEs you need on uh, your schedule to try and improve uh, your star rating. So right here we see about uh, 61. So one modified uh, full-time RN would probably bump us up into the four star rating, which would in turn jump overall up to four and in turn jump our overall score up to four. So right there, all it would take is a one more RN to bump you this facility up to a four star. Now, let's suppose we even want to go further uh, and get us to a five star. Um, but before that I do that, let me just show you one of our other tabs here. So this is going to tell you sort of your comparison of your total staffing. This is the actual. This is case mix. In other words, based upon the uh, acuity of your residents and, and, and their needs, uh, where your case mix lies. And this is the adjusted, which basically is the combining of these two. The adjusted is what your score is based upon. So the green bar is your facility and the blue bar is your peers. So you can sort of see your staff mix and how it compares to your local competitors. For instance, we have a lot more LPNs, a lot less RNs than our competitors. So you can see how that plays out. Now, shifting back to QM. So we were gonna try and get them to a, to a five star. The overall QMs is an overall score uh, from zero to 2300. And right now we're sitting right smack in the middle of four stars. And we can see we need 85 more points to get to a five star rating. Now, how does QMs influence your overall uh, five star rating? If you get a five in a QM, it will bump you up a star. If you get a one in a QM, it will take you down a star. Um, so anything in two, three, or four in QMs really has no impact on your overall rating. So we need to get us, ourselves up to a five to get our overall rating up to a five. How do you do that? Well, QMs are broken into long stay and short stay, and we have basically analyzed all those cut points for you. And right now we're on long stay QMs. You can see we're sitting right in the middle here on long stay too. Now remember, overall we need 85 points, okay? So what we have here is this is this blue bar is where you're currently sitting. The black bar is where you need to be to go up one more level and get more points. So uh, I can see if I hover over this, right now we're at a 3.9% uh, long stay residence with catheters. If I get down to a 3.6, I'm going to get another 20 points, okay? Right here, uh, we have essentially increased ADLs. If we lower that past this black bar, which depending on the size of the facility might be just one resident, um, we will get another 15 points right there. So what you want to look for is essentially where these blue bars are closest to this vertical black bar to know uh, how you can improve. Now, some of them, this facility already is at its highest level. You can see 1.18, 1.18. They're not gonna get any better on that one. Uh, so that's, you're not gonna get any more points than 150 total. So, um, so right here with this facility, we would focus perhaps on our ADLs and our uh, moving independently. Uh, so probably a little more focus on therapies um, and that kind of thing. Short stay, we have the same options. Um, so again, you can see the short stay, if, if you'll know, is anyone that has been in the facility under 100 days. Um, so there'd be residents that are in rehab. And um, you can see, again, right here, uh, here's a rehospitalization. If we can uh, do a little better on that, we'll gain another 21.56 points. 
uh, right here. Here's a really good one. If we can increase our ability, uh, lower our rate in which they're going uh, out to the emergency department, we'll do much better. So it gives you a little idea where the lowest hanging fruit is for the QMs. It looks like we would need to improve in a, a probably about three or four QMs to actually get to our overall 85 uh, to get up to five star, but you can kind of see where you need to go. Now, um, one thing to note here is this is uh, your QMs have quite a bit of delay and it's an aggregate over a uh, year long uh, four quarter term. What you may need is more real time information. In other words, you don't want to be driving through the rear view mirror. And I just wanted to point out before I close out for today that while this is great, this pulls from the CS, uh, I did want to highlight that we also have the uh, real time QMs in Casper, which will allow you to see across your entire chart what QMs are being triggered before. Uh, they even get to CMS so you can make adjustments immediately. So we'll probably dedicate a whole nother video to that, but uh, I've taken enough of your time today. Thank you very much for your attention and feel free to reach out to me uh, at dashpointanalytics.com. My email address is keith at dashpointanalytics.com and have a wonderful day. Thank you.